Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to exploratory data analysis with a Python library called Detail. And it's now one of my go-to libraries for exploratory data analysis work. You can use this library to almost replace Excel entirely because it's got a spreadsheet to look and view, plus all the powerful stuff that Python offers. So we can use pip install to install the library. It's D and then tail. And detail actually works fine in either the traditional IDE or a notebook style environment. Regardless of your choice of IDE, it's very likely that we'll eventually need to use this kind of full screen mode as opposed to a tiny window embedded in a notebook like this. So if you have to use a notebook environment, you can always activate detail inside a notebook. But then later, you can just click on open in new tab and this is going to open the full screen mode. So I'm going to use the Gapminder dataset again for this tutorial. And that dataset is from the Plotly Express. So if you don't have that already, it's now probably a good time to pip install Plotly. So I'm just going to import those two libraries, load some data and then fire up detail. So to activate detail, you want to do detail.show. This is going to be the data frame that you want to show in a detail interface. If we check this D object, it's going to show something like this. And essentially detail creates a Flask web server with this address showing here. You can actually just copy and paste this address into a web browser and then that will take you to the detail interface. Note that this is my computer name. And if you run detail on your side, you will most likely have a different computer name. So don't copy this. So let me show you. I copy this, then I paste in this web browser and that takes me to the detail interface. Or another way to activate detail is in a Python environment, just type d.open browser. And this way will also take you to the detail interface. So the detail user interface doesn't only look like a spreadsheet inside the browser, but it also has a lot of functionalities of a spreadsheet program. You can find the detail menu over here. There are two ways to access the menu. So the first one is by clicking this little arrow button on the top left corner. And the second way is by hovering your mouse just slightly above the column names. And then the menu will appear above the column header. And we can actually edit the cells uh, in place, meaning that when we double click the cell here and we're in edit mode, we can change the values in a cell to whatever we want. And the change will be automatically saved and reflected in this data frame. However, unlike Excel, even if you press Ctrl and Z, that will not undo the change that you just made. So we can actually do conditional formatting here as well. Um, if you go to the menu and then click on highlight, then highlight range, we can select the column uh, and set the criteria. For example, let's select the GDP ca uh, per capita column and let's set it to be greater than, yeah, have to click on this uh, checkbox. Let's say uh, greater than 5,000 and I'm going to highlight in green color and click on apply. Close out this window and now we see that all the cells with the GDP per capita greater than 5,000 are now highlighted in green. Also, another thing very convenient about uh, detail is that notice how the column header is always fixed. It's kind of like the freeze panel function in Excel, except that it's automatically enabled. When we click on a column name, then uh, this column menu will appear and we can do a lot of common tasks. Let's do the year. For example, we can sort the column that's sorted on the year column by descending order. We can also filter values on the column. In country, I'm going to filter on the value equal to Canada. That's where I'm from. So now you only see the information related to the country Canada. Let me remove the filter and we can also hide the columns. For example, I don't really need the ISO alpha ISO num column. So you can just click on it and then uh, go hide or you can even delete them since I don't really need it. Also note that if your column contain number values, then you can do a lot of different operations uh, for the filter. For example, like less than, greater than, not equal. You can also rename the column. So for example, here you can just click on rename and I'm going to call it population instead of just a pop. So that's changed over here. And in the column menu, if we click on this describe, then it's going to show this window here and we'll get metrics such as the data count, maximum, minimum, 
average. It even shows a box plot on the side. When you click on the histogram tab, you also see a nice histogram chart. I'm gonna close out this window and go back to our uh, spreadsheet view. We can even create simple calculation columns in the detail interface. I'm going to bring up the menu and go to data frame functions. Let's try to create a new column uh, to display the total GDP because we know this is going to be a column with numbers. So I'm going to select numeric and then under here operation, I'm going to multiply two columns. One is the GDP per capita. The other is, um, as you guessed, the population of that country. And we can actually see here, this is the operation that it's going to perform. So let's hit create. And here we go, we have a newly created column called GDP, which is uh, the product of population and the GDP per capita. Next, I'm gonna show you how to aggregate data and how to create a pivot table. Let's go to the menu and then summarize data. So a window pop up, let's first do the group by. So this is actually the same tennis function group by. We can select the columns to group by. So I'm going to select continent and year. And then I'm going to click on this by function. And the function is going to be the mean or the average. And I want to calculate the average of the life expectancy for the continent. For the output, I'm going to select new instance instead of override uh, the current data frame. On the bottom here, you can also see what the underlying Python code is uh, trying to run. Once that's done, hit execute. And now we should see a new tab or a new data frame uh, pop up. This is our aggregated data frame. Now we have the average life expectancy by continent and by year. For pivot table, we go to the same summarize data, choose pivot, and I'm going to choose continent as well, year, the value same, life expectancy, and I'll keep the aggregation as mean. And the same again, I'm going to create a new instance or instead of overriding the current one. As you can see, this is the Python code that I will run once we hit execute. So here, this is just another view of the previous data frame that we created using the group by function. So far, we have actually created three different data frames. The first one being the data itself, second one being the group by data frame, and then the third one being the pivot table data frame. And in the URL here, you will see something like three. This is the pivot table. And two, this is the second table that we created, which is the group by table. And here, uh, one, this is the first table or the original data. Let's say if you close down these tabs, if you go to the menu and go down to the bottom in the instances, click on this, then you will see all the active instances that we have in the Python environment. So each one is going to be a separate data frame. You can click on it to activate it. Or you can even press this recycle bin icon to delete the data frame if you want to free some resources. Let me show you how to plot some chart using detail. So on this original data tab, I'm going to bring out the menu and then visualize, then go to charts. I'm going to draw a line chart to show the average life expectancy of each continent over the years. And we'll have the following settings in the charting page. So the x-axis will be uh, the year, y-axis will be the life expectancy, and notice that as we set our parameters, uh, the graph below starts to show up. And the group, I'm going to set as continent. For the aggregation, I'm going to select the mean, uh, the average. This is saying the line chart. So yeah, that was pretty easy to make a chart. You just drag and drop a few things. If you look close enough, you will see that this chart is actually made by the library Plotly. I don't think it has the Plotly logo here, but uh, these menus, these are the Plotly standard menus. As you can see, there are many other chart types. Depending on the data you feed in and then depending on your X, Y axis settings and then other parameters, uh, you might get different results. So feel free to spend some time to play around with this. Going back to our data frame, let me show you this other feature. Go to visualize and then correlations. So I think this is because I changed the pop to population, but we haven't refreshed this page. That's why this column header is still pop. Let me just uh, hit refresh. And there we go, we have the population. I'm gonna click on this to bring up the menu and go to correlations. 
Okay, never mind. It's still complaining about the pop. So, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, we changed the population. We changed the population to pop, and now it's still complaining about the column name. I'm going to rerun this code, get a new copy of the data frame, and continue with our examples. If you know what's going on there, maybe I made a mistake in my code, or maybe there's a bug in the library, please leave a comment below. Thank you. So if you go to the menu and then visualize correlations, and then you can create this correlation matrix in just a few clicks. Now that we have done some work on this data set and we want to save the results of our work, what we can do is we can go to this menu, export to CSV format. Basically, it's going to store the data frame inside a CSV file and then download to your computer. And now we have the same information inside Excel. I hope this tool will make your jobs a little easier. And if you enjoyed the video so far, please smash the like button. It's going to help the channel a lot and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.